Black Midi Hellfire album review. Let's chat about it. Hey guys, what's going on? John here from What's Spinning Here tonight to chat about this latest album from Black Midi. These guys are an experimental rock group out of the UK, and a few years back, they absolutely blew the damn lid off of the internet with their debut album, Schlagenheim. Now, at the time, uh, I was very into what was going on in post-punk at the time, and I saw that they were kind of, you know, from a distance bringing in elements of post-punk, or at least I thought they were, but nothing could have really, you know, turned me on more to their new album than just getting right into it. They did blend post-punk, uh, but they also blended elements of math rock, experimental rock, a little jazz fusion as well, all tied together by these very angular, very twisted riffs and quirky performances. It's a wild trip of an album and only one that's grown on me ever since. But very clearly right off the bat, uh, Black Midi just seems like a band that, you know, doesn't like to sit in one place for a long time. They're not just, you know, happy with the status quo of their sound. I mean, their follow-up album. What a trip. This album took everything that was on the first album, threw it out the window, and brought us uh, an album of progressive rock, jazz fusion, more experimental rock as well. It ended up being one of the best albums of the year, a really exciting trip of an album, which leads me to this new album. Uh, I mean, listening to the singles, uh, you know, it's very clear that they aren't, you know, stopping anytime soon or stopping to try new things overall. I thought I was going to like this album, but bruh. Where even is this album? Like, what are we doing? Where are we? Yeah, this is awesome. This album's intro, Hellfire, does not waste a single second with anything. Here we get a very tense, overly campy instrumental, some wild, colorful production, and an overly uh, exaggerated, very aggressive rant at hyperspeed for some vocals. It is really well done and really exciting. It's really exciting, and for an intro, this has me on the edge of my seat for all minute and 24 seconds. It's beautiful. Then we have Sugar Sue, which I have enjoyed since it dropped as a single very much. It's actually also a really good jumping in point because it shows off a couple of different sounds from Black Midi without suffocating you with one of them. Here we get this very breezy, almost elegant start to this track that quickly descends into madness of progressive rock, jazz fusion, some pretty wild stuff. And I dare you to try and keep up with it because it is constantly shifting. There are super hyper uh, jazz sequences. There's also very elegant, very beautiful moments of clarity and some batshit insane vocals all around. This is just really ballsy and one of the best singles I've heard in any genre this year. On the other hand, Eat Men Eat grooves in a completely different way, so much so that it threw me off. There's practically some tropical rhythms in this instrumental, at least at first, before it picks up. Also, the vocals here are a completely different brand. They're a little less eccentric, but equally as challenging. Also, completely wowing visually. I just feel listening to this track like I'm just going deeper and deeper down this rabbit hole of Black Midi, and I just want to keep going. Just be prepared, you're getting into some pretty heady material that's just going to just keep steamrolling until it's done. And by the end of this track, we are in some freakish, hellish landscape that sounds much like this album cover looks. Welcome to Hell, on the other hand, is a little bit more math rock influenced, which throw in some jazzy sequences. I hope you like odd time signatures. It ends up being really hypnotizing, really wild, but still somewhat approachable. Like when that chorus, I mean, if you want to call it a chorus, rolls around, it's actually really smooth, really likable. Black Midi may be really heady and insane and wild at times, but there are moments of clarity that are really beautiful. It makes things somewhat easier to digest. This album is ridiculous. I don't have a lot of bad stuff to report here. I mean, I genuinely, genuinely think the halftime interlude was really just not necessary for an album like this. I mean, I thought they were doing better with this album's slight narrative just in between these tracks. And 27 Questions as a finale, I mean, there's a lot of things I like about the track. I like the quirky lyrics here. They get pretty funny by the end. And outside of that, the drama to this track I like. But this instrumental is one of the weirdest here, and I don't think that's a compliment. It's one of very few times where things just sound thrown together and, dare I say, sloppy. And because of that, everything else sort of falls apart and becomes, dare I say, goofy. I just know that they could do better because they've proved that on a lot of tracks on here. Like, take, for example, The Race is About to Begin. This track is awesome. I mean, this album doesn't really slow down for longer than 
I don't know, 10, 15 seconds, but that's what makes it so exciting. I mean, you're going to need a lyric sheet if that's something that you're interested in, because I dare you to just really keep up with these vocals. You're not going to. This is also the closest you're going to get to the sound of their last album, Cavalcade, as well. It's quirky and bizarre, but also one of the wildest and densest tracks here. It's really heady stuff. I mean, I would have loved to have sit down with them on this songwriting process. Sheesh. And by the end of this track, it's disintegrated into this really freakish and weird, but also impossible not to move to groove. And with Dangerous Liaisons, we have reached uh, the lounge music area of this album, which is... Weird to even think about. That works for me, though. It's also oddly colorful and sleazy as anything else I've heard this year. And lyrically, I don't know where we even are anymore. We have reached a whole level, a whole new level, I should say, of absurd. And it's crazy to think about, but of all their albums, this seems to have the most layers to it, which is weird. I'm here for it, though. And by the end of this track, it just disintegrates into this oozy, colorful mess. Yes! And the defense actually starts out as a sort of stripped-down folky tune, which is another weird left turn. But when these horns pick up and things get a little gaudy, I'm all for it. Yes, Black Midi are doing freakish lounge music with an absurd amount of layers and even more colors. Uh, but lyrically, performance-wise, they have enough tricks in their sleeves, production tricks as well, to keep you glued to what they're doing. And that's something really exciting. Uh, this is one of the most wowing pieces of music I've heard all year. I mean, I thought I was going to like this album. I've liked everything they've done so far, but this seems to take things to a whole new level of absurdity, of jazz fusion, of progressive rock, of pretty wild ideas and concepts and colors. It is a freaking blast to listen to. I really don't have that many bad things to say here. I mean, I could have taken 10 more minutes of music, but that's just me. Also, I still think that 27 Questions is basically a big miss as a finale, but still, guys... You're going to want to hear this. I'm feeling a light nine on this album. Let me know what you all think down below. If you like the video, be sure to give us a like. Give us a subscribe and let me know down below what you would like for me to chat about in the future. And until next time, have a great day, friends.